Bulavanaka. Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Pacific's favorite rugby show, Drua Talk. I'm Greg Clark. And this week we'll have our regular chat with the Swire Shipping Fiji and Drua men's head coach Mick Byrne. Two try hero Bailey Kunzel from the Western Force joins us as they prepare for their first trip to Lautoka. Rooster Chicken Fijian Drua women's star Jade Coates pops into Clarkie's corner. There's match highlights and our tries of the week. Well, wouldn't it be great if the Drua could play all of their games at home in either Suva or Lautoka because they are certainly a much better team on home turf. It was another history-making day in Lautoka last weekend when the Drua men pulled off a dramatic extra-time victory over the Waratahs, their first ever win over New South Wales. Let's check out the highlights from a seesawing encounter. Whistle goes and we're underway week five of the Super Rugby Pacific in Lautoka. And Mira Mira safe under the ball from the kickoff. Five metres out. Mahi Lano back in the starting team, back from injury. No, Dave Parecki, so good timing to have Lano back. They go to the short side, and there's the pass to Lano, and there's the try. An opening try down the short side. It stopped about seven eight out. Now Massey. Massey straight through. Yosepo Massey hits back. Week, one this week, 12 already in his short career. It's in the air to get on the outside of Peresi. They got a bad, he goes to the front and they caught the napping. It's a try to the drawer. They come up with the goods and it is. Throws the dummy, gets a pass away to Botta. Botta. That is money. Marcy rather. You said the Marcy for the corner and it is a try. The draw. The Fijians, they're flying. Darren Alungi spins, but he can't get it across the chalk. Now the wide ball. Oh, my goodness. He's got three. Line up out to the left, and that's where they go through Walton. And he got it away to Parisi. And now Gamble. They've gone the length of the field in a matter of a minute or... Patek. Lamani. Calamani crashes over. So it is a penalty, but not a yellow card. Alanu again to Hennigan. Here's for Alanu. Here's Walton. He's over. Finally, they found an opening. And the Waratahs. It's Glenn Jackson, a bit of a sharpshooter in his day. Looks on. He's got the distance and the direction is good as well. And Lamani off the field, replaced, and now here's the drive coming from the Waratahs. They're getting very close to the line. They are over, and he has got a double. Oh, Vailanu, here they come. Falls awkwardly, but it's back there for the Waratahs. Thompson Stringer, and now they continue to apply the pressure. Swinton. He's there. He's over. Full grounded. The ball is great. Oh, yeah, leave it. It's going to come back for. Oh, hang on. No. 21. 21. Come here. I'm controlling it. The ball is out to the side. The ball is out to the side of that player, and you'll hit him in the head three times. Wow. Yellow card. Bit of a brain explosion for Matawalu. Collapsing the ball is the call. They don't have to panic. Goes for the drop goal. It's over! Camu Valentini! Camu Valentini, the Iceman, from a year or so ago, has done it again. He had an advantage, and he has done it. Wow, we He's done it off the tee a couple of times for the draw. Wasn't even in the best position to take that drop goal. They had the advantage. And he strikes it well and does it again for the drawer. The very first time in D Clark, and what a way to do it here in Fiji in front of their home fans again. 
What an amazing finish. The draw win another close one in La Toca. Now let's check all the results from week five of the Shop and Save Super Rugby Pacific. The Hurricanes remain unbeaten after their 54-28 win over the Rebels. The Brumbies, too good for Moana, winning 60-21. The draw by three in Golden Point, extra time against the Waratahs. Chiefs held on to beat the Highlanders 28-21. The Blues inflicted yet another loss on the winless Crusaders 26-6. And the Force ended the Reds' good recent run, winning 40-31 in Perth. A perfect warm-up for their trip to Latoka this week. And this is how the ladder looks a third of the way through the regular season. It's the Hurricanes on top by four points over the Chiefs and the Brumbies and Blues round out the top four. Then it's the Reds, Highlanders, Rebels and the Drua in the eight. Moana, Waratahs, Force and Crusaders are the bottom four at this stage. This is Drua Talk and still to come we'll check out our Drua Tries of the Week. There's the Drua Women's Highlights and we catch up with women's star Jade Coates and force winger Bailey Kunzel. But right now it's time to chat to Drua Head Coach Mick Byrne. Well, Mick, has your heart stopped racing after that seesawing match in La Tolka with so much drama in extra time? Yeah, it was uh, it certainly has. It was quite draining, actually. I, I got back here and found myself uh, falling asleep pretty early into the night. So it was quite a draining day. Um, you know, full full credit to the Waratahs, the way they came back at us in that second half and and turned that game around. And, it, and that's what created the... the the heartaches, I suppose, uh, but we got there, and it was it was tense in those last few minutes. So it's uh, all good. Mick, there were plenty of positives, and I'll get to them shortly. But seemingly in control at 26-10 at the break, the drawer again failed to put the opposition away in the second half. We've spoken about this recently. The boys still have work to do on maintaining their intensity. Yeah, it's um, you know, when we have a look at it. We uh, sensed that uh, the discipline was, you know, we gave away seven penalties in about 11 or 12 minutes and uh, three tries. So it was our discipline, um, you know, real sort of avoidable penalties. There was a, you know, a late, a, a late, late hit. There was a player slow to get back on side, getting in the way of the halfback. They were all avoidable, and you know, that's the frustrating part. And that was the frustrating part for the players and. You know, I guess at, at three tries up, um, you're probably looking there and, you know, little things creep into our game that we've just got to be on top of. And we spoke about that on, on Monday and uh, there were some good, hard, uh, honest conversations had. The players put their hand up and uh, aware, of, uh, aware of where they let themselves down. And, uh, but having said all that, to swing the momentum back around and win the game was was uh, pretty courageous and you know I showed them that defensive effort from a scrum around about the 70, 76 minute mark when it was 36 all and the urgency we showed there and, and that's the sort of urgency we, we need to take into next week. We need to see those pictures as we move forward and, uh, and, and believe in ourselves as what we did in that last few minutes defensively. So, it went to extra time, the boys hung in there and waited for their opportunity. You must have been proud of them. Absolutely. Um, you know, as I said to them in the, in, the, in the rooms afterwards, however we found ourselves at 36 all, what we did to win that game was, uh, was, was really strong, really courageous, dug deep. Um, but as I said, you know, the Waratahs um, put us there and so full credit to them. Yosefo Masi, another hat trick, his second in the Drua jersey. I get the feeling that he's a great student of the game, always looking to improve. Is he a joy to coach? Uh, yeah, I think um, you know Mas. He um, he's just a professional. He he knows his body. He knows what he needs to do. He prepares himself well, um, and he's a lot quicker than people probably give him credit for. He he's got a reasonably comfortable stride on him and. He moves across the ground pretty quickly. Um, I think it might have been you, Clarky, a couple of weeks ago mentioned that he hadn't had a try. He must have been listening um, because he scored five since then. 
<laughs> yes, he's a good listener. Maybe I should challenge more of your players to score tries. Well, this Saturday, we're back in La Toca, and it's important that the Drua stay focused because you're in the top eight at present and you need to keep building, especially at home. Are you ready for the Western Force? Yeah, well, <clears throat> they're going to come across here with a bit, bit of a spring in their step. You know, they, they beat the Reds, um, and I thought they played well. You know, they're a good side, and, um, you know, Simon's got them, uh, Crono's got them playing really well and they've got a lot of belief in, the, in what they're doing and we know that uh, you know Perth's a hot place as well so they're not going to be daunted by the weather here that's when you go to Perth that's one of the first things sides experience when they go to Perth is the extra heat so um, we'll just uh, have to be ready for them. We spent our time this week getting some of our areas uh, together but we know the Western Force are going to come here we know what they they can bring and we'll uh, we have to be certainly ready for the way they defend and um, how they're going to come at us pretty hard putting them under the microscope a bit more the force were impressive in that win over the reds in perth what did you make of it well i think when i watched them play last week it was like watching them last year against us you know they came out at home and they really really stepped up and played uh, fast and, and furious football so uh, we've got to be ready for that and um, we've got to make sure that that first 15 or 20 minutes is uh, where we're in the game and I know the Waratahs scored first last week but then we came back pretty strongly after that so uh, as with all with all games it's it's not necessarily the first five minutes as we found out against the Blues it's like the first 15 or 20 minutes is probably the start of a game and so we're going to make sure our first 20 minutes is um, is the best best we can play. Well, it's another men's and women's doubleheader at Churchill Park in La Toca on Saturday. The Fiji and Drua taking on the Western Force, and we're all looking forward to it again. Thanks for your time, Mick. All the best. Thanks, Kaiki, and I'll see you on the weekend. Don't miss it on Saturday. The men's clash is at 1pm, followed by the women at 3.30. The draw men hoping to make it three from three in La Toca in 2024. But the force will be out to spoil the party. I managed to track down four-star Bailey Kunzel as the team headed east from Perth. Bola Bailey. Well done on your two tries personally last week. Congratulations on the win over the Reds for the team. What do you put the team's improvement down to? Just focus on ourselves, mate. Um, we know we, we had a couple poor losses, um, but we were in those games at the, at the start and it's just the way we finished them off, we didn't quite get the chocolates, but that was just a great performance from us. We started pretty well, but we still leaked 31 points, which we obviously will we'll take the learnings from. Well, one win doesn't make a season, but is there a lot more belief in the systems now that you've had a good win? Yeah, massive belief. Um, you know, we come with wins, you obviously believe a lot and we struggled with that with the start of the year but we just had to stick, stick tight and, and we knew the rewards would come. We've been working real hard and um, yeah, we're, we're pretty great for, uh, grateful to, to get the win and hopefully we can do, uh, do a job on, on the weekend. You're back on the road again this week and it's possibly the toughest road trip nowadays. Are you preparing any differently for the Drua? Uh, not really. We know we struggled a bit last year um, travelling so we've um, we've worked in that in the pre-season and uh, I guess we, we just got to focus on ourselves to speak about it a lot. Can't look too far forward. Um, we obviously just got to get our recovery right and whatnot and obviously there will be a different environment going to Fiji but we're, we're looking forward to it. It's just another rugby game and we just have to do our role and do our job and we should get, get a good reward from it. Well, the Drua are unbeaten in Lotoka so far this year with wins over the Waratahs and the Crusaders. Have you been impressed? Yeah, we know how the Fijians play. They, they play with a lot of Fijian flair and they love their offload game and unstructured footy. So we just got to focus on ourselves and, and not get caught up in that sort of, sort of style of footy. Um, we know they like to, to throw those offloads. We just can't be doing that. We just got to play structured footy and, and just focus on ourselves and um, yeah, really do our job and do a role that we, we're happy with and um, just keep building from last week. Now, despite the heat and the vocal crowd in Lotoka, visiting teams say win or lose, it's always a highlight playing in the Pacific. Are you all looking forward to it? Yeah, we can't wait, mate. Um, it's the first time for the Force to head over in a couple of years. And look, um, we know what they bring, we know what the crowd brings, and we can't wait for that experience. Um, oh, it's going to be the first time for me to head over to Fiji and, and to, to witness and, and be a part of that that experience and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and I'm sure all the boys are too. 
Well, mate, thanks very much for your time. And Bailey, safe travels, and we'll see you on Saturday. Thanks, Clarkie. The Drua versus the Western Force is one of six games this weekend. Friday, the Crusaders hope to win their first game of the season, but it'll be tough against the Chiefs. The Waratahs host Aussie rivals the Rebels. Both teams are desperate for the win. Saturday, it's the Drua hosting the Force in Latoka from 1 p.m. Moana Pacifica play the Blues. The Highlanders are at home taking on the unbeaten Hurricanes and the Reds clash with Aussie rivals, the Brumbies. You're watching Drua Talk. It's great to have you with us. I'm Greg Clark, and I really enjoyed calling the doubleheader in Lotoka last Saturday. The Drua men were successful, but the Drua women suffered a setback, losing to the Waratahs, who now look like the team to beat in 2024. Here are some highlights. This match is going to start in a bit of the Lotoka sun, and the Waratahs kicking off. Falls for the Waratahs. And they can put it through their hands. Here's Stewart. Pins the ears back. She spotted the opening. Oh, the end and away was absolutely brilliant. A hat trick last week, and she has burnt them already in Lautoka. What a real handful she could be today. The flying Mayor Stewart. Lane Morgan up to go to the right. McKenzie, it's the Fen going, who got the offload away to Duck, and she's taking plenty of stopping, and there's room on the far side as well for Leaney, and she is over! Caitlin Leaney, just back from a stint in the UK at the Harlequins Club, the Wallaroo. But a terrific opportunity again for the New South Wales Waratah. Here's the kick across Miller, kicking for Stewart, and who wants it? Towed through. Picked up at the back and cleaned up by Miller. And Miller spots the opening. Running it back, giving it to Stewart. And Maya Stewart has got a double. Terrific counter-attacking rugby from the New South Wales Waratahs. Goes to ground, 12 inside. Waratahs territory. Advantage is over for the knock on and the pass from Array was a good one. They're backing up all over the place and they score the try. Wow, Milania. Oh. Rafai waits with her glove. Breaks away and has a run on her own and dives over. She's recovered from the ACL injury. She was at the Rebels last season, but she is happy to be home. Good take from Lafay. They rumble, they rumble. This time they cannot stop Brady O'Gorman. And so that will do the end of the first half at Churchill Park in La Toca. Natasha Lafay takes the glasses off and they'll head to the sheds for a well-earned break. So after leading by 19 points to nil at half time, it is the New South Wales Waratahs leading the Fijian Drill women by 24 points to 14. Again, a good two-handed take from Atassi Lafay. Get it back to Brittany Merlo. And here's the rumble. It's bread and butter stuff at the moment. She can see the line and she's over. Oh, the pack. They love it. Come on. Signals time on. Second half underway. And it falls for the Drua as the crowd starts to roar. Lafay enjoying her time back in the Waratahs' colours. Else up from fullback. Intercepted. Nobody at the back. And it's a clear run to the line. And don't they love it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Kamini. Mawara. Piper Duck. 
with the company. The 19th game for the Waratahs women. And good hands down the short side and Miller. Miller for the corner and they can't bring it down. What a try. Through the hands and the finish was special from Desiree Miller. Being told to use it as they march forward and now the arm goes out so they've got advantage. Down the short side they go and Fredericks gets it to Miller. She puts it on the toe. And the chase is on. They're flying for it back there. Who wants it? It's lying loose. They're claiming a try. And it is Georgina Fredericks who's claiming it. The replacement hooker hasn't been used yet. They go to the short side. Company takes plenty of stopping, twisting, turning. And over she goes. Oh, so hard to stop. So close to the line. Fredrickson, McKenzie, stepping. Five out, numbers to the left. Alice quick hands, Miles Stewart, over it goes to Miller. There's another one for the left winger. Bird is happy to play it this time. McKenzie, shut down. Bird throws the dummy. Oh, so close. To the short side goes Churchill, and she's over. The Sky Churchill certainly deserves a five-pointer because she's been impressive today. But then in the second half, Merlo, Miller, Fredericks, Company, Miller, and Churchill. So in the end, that was, uh, what, ten tries to three. The Waratahs women had a great visit to Fiji, and they'll be confident that they can go all the way in 2024. It's back to the drawing board for the Drill women as we check the week two results. The Brumbies beat the Rebels 24-22. Tars are unbeaten after their 62-21 win over the Drua. And the Force also remain unbeaten thanks to their 24-14 win over the Reds. So, this week it's the Waratahs versus the Rebels on Friday. On Saturday, the Drua play the Force in Lotoka at 3.30pm Fiji time. And also on Saturday, it's the Reds hosting the Brumbies. The Waratahs are on top of the women's table on 10 points. The Force are on 9, Drua 5, Brumbies 4, Rebels 1 and the Reds are at the bottom on 0 points. OK, it's time to head to Clarkie's Corner and we have a special guest from the Fijian Drua women's team. On Drua Talk, it's time to see who's in Clarkie's Corner. It is great to have Fiji Drua women's lock, Jade Coates, with us in Clarkie's Corner. I want to know your story, because here you are playing for, for the Drua, but you were born in Madam Mata in the Waikato in New Zealand. Where did it all start rugby-wise, first of all? Thanks, Kaki, for having me. Um, rugby-wise, I um, attended Matamata Primary School, and I have older siblings. I'm the youngest, and when you're young, you just want to do anything your older siblings want to do. So my big sister played rugby at school, and I just wanted to be like her. And so when I was about five years old, the coach at school was like, come join us. You know, back then there was no birds, just bare feet, and it was just the frosty cold mornings in New Zealand. Um, yeah, I just started playing, was the only girl amongst all the boys, absolutely loved it. Um, I went to a private school and girls weren't allowed to play rugby, so that was a shock for me. So I had a few challenges and had to stop and I took up lots of other sports as you do when you're young. I did netball, everything, cricket, basketball, you name it, I <laughs> did it. Water polo even. Um, and then when I attended high school, I like started playing again and it just hasn't really stopped since. Okay, well here you are, we're talking to you in uh, Lautoka, not Matter Matter, <laughs> yeah. in, in, in New Zealand, so why make the move to Fiji? Um, life's all about opportunities and um, when I was back home in New Zealand I was just playing FPC there and just working and the opportunity came up that the, there was going to be back then a Fijiana draw team for the Super W in Australia and I got approached and um, for me I'm a proud Fijian and a proud Kiwi, so anytime I got the opportunity to represent my family or my culture, I, I couldn't turn it down. So for me, that was an opportunity, and I just said yes, and it's third season in, and I'm still going strong. <laughs> Tell us about your Fiji connection. Yeah, so my grandmother, my bumbu, she was born and raised here. My dad was born and raised here. Um, 
from, we're from Tailevu Nananu, um, and they moved to New Zealand when my dad was probably about 14 years old. Um, so I've always had a big connection to Fiji, always come here as a kid. Um, so yeah, it's always been a part of my life and very proud of it. I know you do some work back in New Zealand, more on that in a moment, but um, how does it feel for Jade Coach to be playing for the Drua and Fiji? It's pretty emotional. <laughs> um, it's a bit surreal to be honest. Like, you dream as a kid to be a rugby player, but I always dreamed to play for the All Blacks or the Flying Fijians because I never really looked into the, like, the women's game so much, it wasn't that big. But now to be a role model for younger girls and to be able to like, represent my family and, and be able to do it as a job is, is oh, yeah, it's pretty surreal. Words can't really describe the feeling of being able to wear the jersey and lace my boots up and play each week. Well, it's great to see you running out there for the for the Drua and uh, looking for a three-peat, but a bit of a hiccup against the, the Waratahs, so there's still work to be done. Yeah, definitely this season you don't want to peak too early. Um, you know, first year we went unbeaten, that was a clean sweep, which was pretty bittersweet, you know, and then Nick, last year we had our challenges, but it's how we bounced back from it. Like this week, Waratahs came out and they they were the better team on the on the day and for us it's good learnings. We can go away back to the drawing board and really focus on us and the basic stuff that we just need to improve on and just build so we're peaking at the end of the season. So you play your rugby in Fiji and then of course you go back to New Zealand to do other work. What is that? Yeah, so uh, before joining the draw I was a women's rugby development officer for Waikato Rugby Union. Love the game, love giving back, love working in the community space um, but then obviously you can't work a job like that <laughs> when you're playing here. And so I've been working as a teacher aide in New Zealand. I work with kids with learning difficulties or behavioural issues, a lot of one-on-one -on -one work. And um, it's amazing, like, it's, I love working with those kids. They're awesome and the connection. And to be able to be a role model and stable person in their life is so special and something that I really miss. As much as I love playing rugby, I definitely miss the kids that I work with. Well, Jade Coates, what a champion. Keep doing what you do with the kids and keep doing what you do with uh, the Drua and Fijiana. All Naka. the best. Thank you so much, Ducky. Vanaka. <laughs> Jade Coates, what a great ambassador she is for women's rugby in the Pacific. And we look forward to seeing Jade and the Drua women in action once again in Latoka on Saturday. Kick off, a reminder, it's 3.30 p.m. Fijian time after the men's game. Time now for our tries of the week. Coming up, the Fijian Drua women in Lautoka, but we'll start with the Fijian Drua men at Churchill Park in the first game of the doubleheader against the Waratahs. Next to the right, throws the dummy, gets a pass away to Monta. Monta, that is Mani, Masi rather. You set the Masi for the corner and it is a try. Knowledge is over for the knock on. And the pass to Murray was a good one. They're backing up all over the place and they score the try. Wow. Some great action from the Drua women and men. And good luck to them as they host the Western Force in the big double header in Latoka on Saturday. The men from 1 pm and the women from 3 30 pm. And I look forward to calling all the action again with Sam Wikes and Namani Nandolo. Well, that's it for Drua Talk for another week. I'll leave you with a look at the Swire Shipping Fiji and Drua men's team and the Rooster Chicken Fiji and Drua women's team to take the field against the force on Saturday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Clark. Mauve.